tackle. The Hawks have learned how to win the big one. Oh, my. They've run the table in the Big Ten and are 11 and 1 for the first time ever. The Hawkeyes have polished off Florida in the Outback Bowl. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this special preseason edition of Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz. I'm Gary Dolphin. It was 115 years ago when Iowa first kicked off its intercollegiate program, the last 75 in hallowed Kinnick Stadium. 2004 promises to make more special memories. Over the next hour, we'll break it down position by position, player by player, and assisting me again this season, I'm happy to report, is Andy Garman. Andy? Thank you very much, Dolph. Over here on this side of the Iowa football locker room, we're going to talk about the team itself. Myself, Karen Schulte, and Kevin Hall will take the next 60 minutes to break the team down position by position so you know everything you need to know about the Iowa Hawkeyes as they get ready to take the field on September 4th. We look forward to doing that over the next hour. For now, I'll send it back to you, Dolph, and your very special guest. Thanks a lot, Andy. We'll get back to you shortly. Let's say hello to the head coach. Welcome to another year, Kirk, uh, even though you've been hard at it for a few weeks. Oh, the guys have been working hard for a couple of weeks, but uh, it's certainly great to get started. The season is getting close. You've had a couple of scrimmages. The fans have been able to uh, view and, and look in on. We'll take a look at some of that footage. But what's your feel? What's your tempo with uh, the season a week away? Well, uh, you know, the players have worked extremely hard. I think we've had a productive preseason from that standpoint. But uh, as the scrimmage last week indicated, we still have a lot of work to do. And, uh, you know, it's about normal this time of year. Indeed. Uh, you've been working them hard, though, two a days. Uh, shorter, uh, uh, at least on the calendar, because school started early this year, didn't it? Yeah, it was a much different uh, schedule, no question about that. Uh, first time since I've been here now that uh, we haven't opened up uh, the first week of class, so it's a little bit different. We had a week of class last week, and uh, now we're into game week finally. Everybody's talking about your quarterbacks, Kirk, and there's Drew Tate, who's at least peg number one right now. I've really been pleased with the whole group. I think uh, it's been a little tough because we've had some problems with the offensive line, especially early in camp, to evaluate the guys totally. But uh, I think Drew's done a nice job. Jason Manson's done a real nice job. And Eric McCollum's really making strides, too. So I think we're really healthy at that position. You're looking for a, a stretch receiver, Warren Holloway, uh, Calvin Davis, uh, uh, Clinton Solomon's back in the fold. How are the receivers looking? Well, you know, I wasn't real uh, overwhelmed, I guess, with the, the performance of the group back in the spring. I thought we uh, uh, played like an immature young group. but. I'm really happy to say the guys have worked hard over the course of the summer, and I'm not saying we're there yet, but we've made strides. We're really, I think, doing a much better job at the receiver position, and uh, you know, a lot of guys have really improved, so that's great to see. The running backs, Jermel Lewis will not play. We will talk more about Albert Young and Marcus Schnorr and others as the program moves on. We're looking at the tight ends, Tony Jackson, Mike Follett. You've got some veteran leadership there now. We have. We had a little bit of an injury problem early, but uh, uh, Tony and Mike are doing a nice job. Ryan Majerus, you see right there, is doing a great job, too. He's really made a step. and. Uh, interesting uh, development. I think you know Champ Davis is coming along. We've uh, fooled around a little bit with Scott Chandler in there as well. Looking at some of your offensive linemen, two notables or two new kids uh, I want to talk about, Mike Elgin and Lee Gray, how are they coming along? Yeah, Mike uh, stepped in last spring and really did a nice job, and we had good feelings about Mike all the way through. He's a tremendous young man, a very competitive, tough guy, and an excellent student, by the way, also. Uh, uh, he's carried about a 3.9 in mechanical engineering. And, and Lee Gray, obviously, uh, you know, we were bringing him along last year behind Robert, and uh, Lee's had a good spring, a, a good camp, and uh, hopefully he'll be ready to go Saturday. Oh, well, defensively, everybody knows about Matt Roth and these two guys, Abdul Hodge and Chad Greenway. That's the heart and soul of your defense. Well, I think uh, yeah, we have three marquee players with those, uh, those guys, and, and Sean Con Considine's right there also. Sean's really a, a tremendous performer in the back end for us. And uh, for the first time, we have a couple of veteran corners. Antoine and Joe Vaughn have really been doing a nice job. So. The guys that played last year have really been doing a good job. Great to get Jonathan Bobino back as well. Indeed, there's Joe Vaughn. He had six picks a year ago, and what a supporting cast with, as you mentioned, Antoine Allen. Uh, we're going to see Marcus Pascal. He's the heir apparent to Bob Sanders. Uh, you've got some other uh, uh, nice depth, I, I wanted to say, at, at all positions in the secondary for a change. Yeah, I think uh, we're a little healthier than in the past, and certainly uh, Marcus won't have the pressure on him. Uh, uh, with the other three starters returning. So, Marcus, all he has to do is go out and do his job, and I think he's ready to do that. And, of course, Kyle Schlicker, another name. If there's one name that's talked about more than uh, Nate Kading, it was Robert Gallery and vice versa, and Schlicker's the heir apparent there. What, what are your early reads on him? Kyle's done a good job. Uh, we, you know, we were pleased with him last spring, and, and uh, you know, he's made improvement every day since he's been here, and he's really done a nice job in the preseason. So we're, we're confident he'll have a good year. I Dave, Dave Bradley, obviously, we're counting on Dave to continue to perform well. Indeed. He could be an all-Big Ten punter this year, Kirk, uh, with his accuracy. Now, you've, you've let the fans view a couple of your scrimmages be, because of the shortened uh, preseason and, and your workouts. Uh, I know the fans appreciate that. 
that and gives uh, the Iowa group and following and faithful a little better view as to what to come, what, what to expect here in the next couple of weeks. Well, it's, it's something, Gary, we'd like to do from now on. Uh, we've had the Fan Appreciation Day. Uh, uh, that's a couple of years running now. It's really been well received, certainly. And then our thoughts, uh, you know, we have a young football team this year. I thought maybe opening up the scrimmage to get some fans uh, in there might be good for our younger players. And, I think also it's just good to change the tempo, and I know our fans enjoy it, so we plan on doing that every year now. And the players always love playing in front of a crowd. We're going to break down the season on this preseason special of Iowa football with Kirk Ferentz, by position and by game, right after this timeout. Iowa football with Kirk Ferentz is brought to you by University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, changing medicine, changing lives. Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Outback Bowl champions. Mediacom the exclusive home of the Iowa Football Replay Show. True North, we'll show you the way. And the Eastern Iowa Airport, your ticket to the world. Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz is also brought to you by Carlos O'Kelly's, the home of Hawk Talk with Coach Kirk Ferentz. Berthel Fisher & Company, Worlds of Opportunity, U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Reference audio video, your ticket to home theater. hy V, where there's a helpful smile in every eye. And Advance Auto Parts, we're ready in advance. Welcome back to Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz, our preseason special. The Hawks open up with Kent State next week, and we'll talk about that later. Kirk, uh, quarterbacks, the good news is you've got two or three guys going to be around for two or three years now. Uh, but right now, they're very inexperienced. What's been the read in, in preseason training camp? It is a uh, very young group, Gary, no question. Uh, the oldest guy is a sophomore right now. I've got a couple of sophomores. So, uh, you know, but I think the guys have done a great job. And if you look at it early, the last two years, both Nathan Chandler and Brad Banks, uh, they'd only been on campus a year prior to going into their senior year. So uh, from an experience standpoint, both uh, Drew and Jason have been here longer than those guys, or as long. And so far, so good. I think the guys have done a nice job. Uh, uh, the big test now is going out there and actually getting the experience on the game field. But uh, I, I'm real confident the guys will show well. Kirk, you've, you've pegged Drew Tate for the time being a solid number one. What are his intangibles that uh, elevate him above Jason and Eric for the moment? Yeah, I think he started out with an advantage last spring, uh, having been our number two guy last year. But that being said, you know, Jason's really competed well, and Eric McCollum's making a move as well. Uh, so it's been, it's been good competition. Uh, I think probably uh, Drew right now is the most accurate passer of the group. And, He's really showing good uh, leadership attributes out there, too. But again, I could say the same thing about Jason. His passing's improved. He's more consistent. And uh, Jason's a fine leader as well. Well, Andy Garman profiles the offense starting with the quarterbacks. All right, thanks, guys. Who's the man? It's a pretty unfunny 90s comedy, but it's also a pretty common question around Iowa City. There are four underclassmen in the mix to try and take over the role vacated when Nate Chandler stepped away. Redshirt freshman Eric McCollum is also in the mix, but the quarterback race shakes down to basically a two-man race. Drew Tate and Jason Manson. We work together. You know, we don't really look at who's the man, who's not the man. We try to help each other out the best we can because we want the best for the team. We don't even look at it like that. I mean, we're just trying to make each other better. And, I mean, the best man to get it. While both players will downplay it, a healthy competition can lead to a controversy down the road, especially if one of the two struggles. You know, I mean, when we do screw up, just hopefully not at the wrong time, because I'm sure that's going to happen. You know, the, the inexperience is going to happen, but, uh, you know, I think if uh, we're concentrating on the game plan and everything at hand, then, uh, you know, we shouldn't be out of focus. And when we do mess up, it just should be, you know, lack of concentration. The obvious comparisons come from three years ago, when Kirk Ferentz had to choose between pocket passer Kyle McCann and the scrambler Brad Banks. Manson says that comparison may not be accurate. I think Drew runs pretty well. I mean, maybe not like an option style, but if he has to scramble, he'll definitely get the yards that he can pick up. And I think I could, uh, I could throw the ball a little bit too.
Joined now by Iowa Offensive Coordinator Ken O'Keefe, and uh, I guess the man at the center of the quarterback situation, whether or not we call it a controversy, I'll just put it to you straightforward. Who is going to be the starting quarterback? Well, right now, you know, we've, we've got two weeks to prepare for our first ball game, and Drew Tate's done a great job in camp. Uh, you know, we, uh, we feel he has the experience, he's got the knowledge of the system, uh, the leadership uh, uh, ability in the huddle right now and the arm to, you know, to, to be the starting quarterback. And he's put himself in that position since spring. And, uh, you know, Jason Manson and Eric McCollum have worked really hard and, uh, at this point and improved tremendously and done everything they can to unseat him. But he's, you know, he's, he's still able to maintain his edge. And, and those other guys are coming on strong as well. What would you say to people who, who's thought of the offense this year is just don't turn it over? Just don't put the defense in a hole. That's a good, that's a, a very good uh, suggestion. You know uh, <laughs> that that's something that is our number one goal each and every week is to make sure that you know we take great care of the football. You know, uh, ball security is job one. Uh, you know, we uh, we feel that's extremely important. Uh, the next most important thing in, in in offensive football is making big plays. We feel, uh, and after that, it's uh, you know a combination of a, a bunch of other things. Uh, you know, like moving the ball on first down. You know, uh, uh, converting third downs and being able to score in the red zone and uh, those are the things that we focus on offensively each and every week uh, but it all starts with taking great care of that football. All right coach thank you very much let's take a closer look at another facet of the offense we're going to talk running backs now. There are some speedy shoes to fill this season for the Iowa football team handing off to fast Freddie Russell is no longer an option but don't expect Iowa's offensive scheme to go away from the ground game anytime soon. There's an awful lot of talent back. And the Hawkeyes will indeed be looking to run. Senior Jermel Lewis is back to full strength after missing a good portion of last season following knee surgery. Lewis is a powerful running back who has a heck of a highlight tape. This is bringing my, uh, my experience to the, to the table for the, uh, for the offense. Just making sure we all, I know what we know what to do before games and stuff like that, how to prepare during the week and things like that. As long as we, as long as we stay focused on our game and we remain hungry and we know, we know what, it, what it took to get where we at now, I don't think, I don't think we'll, we'll, ever, we'll never feel like we're, we're the hunted. Marcus Schnorr has also been a steady running back for Iowa. Schnorr was the Hawks' third leading rusher last year. And joining in the mix is Albert Young, a redshirt freshman who everybody's talking about. He would have played last year as a true freshman, but broke his leg and waited his turn. And junior transfer Marcus Simmons is a solid player joining the Hawkeyes after leaving Nebraska. He, too, could be a big-time ball carrier. Aaron Mickens looks to be the Hawkeyes starter at fullback. After seeing limited minutes playing behind Edgar Cervantes the last two seasons, he's looking for a breakout season. With the fullbacks, we uh, have to be able to do a lot of different things in, in our offensive scheme. And, uh, Back Jermel Lewis and Jermel, it uh, seems like you've got a heck of a lot of competition in a stacked backfield this year. Yeah, um, I think so. Albert Young and uh, Marcus Snow have really done a good job of stepping up. Uh, Marcus really uh, showed himself last year and coming in Iowa State games really early in the season. In, in early in the season, and uh, we also got a couple young running backs that's coming up and uh, Damian Simpson and. Uh, who else we got? We got uh, Marcus Simmons back there and, uh, and Sam Brownlee. So, you know, we're really deep at running back. Seems like you guys got a really good combination. You guys can throw a bunch of different looks, especially when you talk about a back like you and then a back like Marcus. Yeah, um, it's, it's a, we have a lot of different running styles. Um, myself and Albert, we, Albert's really like one of, one of my favorites to watch, you know, because he, he really reminds me of LaDainian Thomason. And uh, Marcus, is a very, he's a very fluent runner. You know, he really doesn't make any hard cut moves, but he's, he's really like in, in and out weaving through, weaving through traffic. So it's, it's pretty interesting to watch. Last thing, you're not going to be in the first game against Kent State. How hard is it going to be for you to have to sit on the sidelines and watch everybody else? 
Um, it's gonna be real hard for myself to be able to cope with that because for one, I'm a competitor, and I've already spent a lot of time on the sidelines in in uh, in, in the past. So, I mean, that's, that's really gonna be tough to not be out there with my team again. And I know I let I know I let my teammates down, and I just it's just a matter of getting gaining my respect back. All right, Jermel, thank you very much for joining us. Let's go across the other side of the locker room to Gary and Coach. It's been a, a nice, quiet summer on campus in terms of uh, young guys and how they behaved, and it's unfortunate that Jermel and both Marcus Simmons will miss opening day. Thankfully, you've got a lot of depth at tailback, but it's good to see Jermel step up to the plate and take responsibility for his uh, mistakes. I, I think he did a good job handling the situation. Unfortunately, he made a bad decision, and uh, you know, it's going to cost him a ball game, but he's been uh, upfront about the whole thing. and. Uh, the biggest point we tried to make to Jamel was, you know, did some damage with the uh, uh, teammates and coaching staff as far as his cre credibility being a senior. Uh, that being said, you can't undo what's been done, and now the big thing is uh, what, he, what he does from this point on. And he had a great camp, and I expect him to have a great season. All right, Coach, thanks so much for your time. This segment, we'll be back with more preseason Iowa football with Kirk Ferentz right after a brief timeout. <laughs> Welcome back to the Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz preseason special. I'm Andy Garman. We've talked about the quarterback and the running back position. The question is, who are the other offensive threats? If Drew Tate or Jason Manson is the starting QB, who's he going to be throwing the ball to? Karen Schulte has that. Not only will there be a new guy throwing the majority of the passes this fall, there'll be some different guys catching them too. The Hawkeyes graduated four of the top five receivers from last year's team but a pair of part-time starters in Ed Hinkle and Calvin Davis head up a receiving core that leaves little doubt about the potential of Iowa's passing game. We're really going to miss, uh, you know, Mo and Razor, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of guys, you know, that are going to step up, and, uh, you know, our younger guys are doing a real good job right now, and uh, you know, if we just keep going and, you know, do what we're doing, and I think we'll be all right. Hinkle saw limited minutes because of injuries last year, but Hawk fans will get to watch this guy for the next two seasons. He's only a junior. And only a sophomore this year, Calvin Davis, played some key minutes and had a key touchdown in Iowa's 30-27 win over Michigan. Touchdown. Pushing Hinkle and Davis will be senior Warren Holloway and junior Matt Malloy. Both will see considerable playing time this year. Once again, the Hawkeyes will look to a new tight end. Senior Tony Jackson looks to be the replacement for Eric Jensen. I, I'm finally getting a chance this year to be able to contribute to the team. Um, you know, I've had a chance to contribute in the past. I feel like my, my role this year will be a lot more significant, but um, I'm not really thinking about tight ends in the past. I'm just trying to do the best I can to help our team win. But don't count out Mike Follett. He's a 6'5 junior who moved from linebacker. Or Champ Davis, a sophomore who played as a true freshman a year ago at fullback. Regardless of who the intended receiver will be, the intentions of these receivers will be to get in the game, make the big catch, and get to the end zone. I'm Karen Schulte for Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz. Joined now by two of the Iowa Hawkeyes' big wide receiver threats. Next to me, Warren Holloway on the far side, Ed Hinkle. Ed, we'll begin with you. Uh, some lingering health problems last year, but now I'm sure ready to take the field for 2004. Yeah, I can't wait to, to be back out on the field 100% you know, healthy and, uh, you know, I've been feeling good throughout the summer and, you know, so far this camp and uh, I'm ready to go. And watching last year, I'm sure, had to just drive you crazy, but at the same time, how much did you learn from having to sit and watch everybody else play? Well, I learned a lot from, uh, you know, watching the guys and, you know, it, there's little things that you can see when you're not out on the field that, uh, you know that I, I was trying to help the other guys see and everything and I think that you know helped me you know in my game because you know now I realize some of the little things that are happening that uh, you know I couldn't really see when I was out on the field before. Now your injury last year opened the door for guys like Ramon Ochoa and I'm gonna ask Warren. Uh, Ramon was a guy that kind of toiled in the shadows for several years. He came to his senior year and really exploded onto the scene. It seems like you've got that chance this year. Um, yeah, I've, I've been working hard along with other guys, and um, I'm just glad to get the opportunity to play my senior year. You know, like Ramon, I plan on making the most of it. You guys look at this receiver core, and it seems like you've got every stereotypical piece. You've got the burner, you've got the possession guy, you've got a big tall guy, or a couple of them. I mean, is there a weakness to this receiver core? Hmm. No, I hope not. And if we have one, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not going to let anybody no. know? Oh, no. They got to earn it themselves. All right. So we'll see how these receivers turn out right now. We'll go down in the trenches. Kevin Hall has more on the offensive line. There probably has not been a better offensive line in all of college football than the Iowa Hawkeyes the past two seasons. Four Hawkeye linemen have been drafted by the NFL in the last two years, and now Robert Gallery is gone, but the Hawks once again expect the O-line to be one of their strengths. It can be very believable seeing as though our head coach is known as the best O-line coach in the country, and the opposition coach, he's pretty good, and the players that came out the university, the success they have in the NFL, people may tend to believe that Iowa, yes, it is the O-line university. Senior Pete McMahon is now the elder statesman on the Hawkeyes offensive line and perhaps the next Iowa lineman who will move on to the NFL. Uh, Pete's a great guy. Uh, you know, he's played, uh, what did he, started 13 games here uh, in his career and things like that. And uh, he's the eldest of the group. So, uh, you know, uh, we look up to him and things like that. And I think this so line can be very strong. We've got a lot of guys coming, coming up and... Uh, ready to work hard and play hard and uh, guys who know what they're doing and guys have been working together for a long time so I'm very confident in this year's O-line. For the most part this group of linemen does not have a lot of game experience but they have practiced with and learned from some of the best linemen college football has seen in recent years. You look on our wall every day and you see you know all Americans and NFL first round draft choices and and everything and, and it's, it's really encouraging to see that because you know, a lot of the guys have been in our same situation, same shoes, and, and, and they know what it takes to win. And, and we're looking to find that right now as a, as a group and as a team. I mean, that's what camp's all about, it's coming together and, and just learning how to play hard. For the fourth straight year, the Hawks will feature a new quarterback calling the plays. But no matter who is under center, the size and strength of the Hawkeye linemen should bolster Iowa to another big season. I'm Kevin Hall for Iowa Parents. Joined now by two of the men in the trenches on the offensive line on the far side, Pete McMahon, right next to me, Mike Jones, and Mike, we'll begin with you. A lot of people have had some questions. Uh, you've been banged up a little bit. How are you feeling? Right now I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I did pull a hamstring back in July, but uh, me and the trainers have been working really hard to uh, get me back in the field, and so far it's working out real well, and I'll be fine by our first game. Looking at the left side of the line, the man who was next to you is uh, making a lot of money this mm -hmm. year. Shape up your side of the line. Well, you know, we have me and Lee Gray, and uh, I think so far Lee Gray's done an excellent job. Really ever since, I think his turning point was our bowl game practices. You know, he really started working hard then. Not that he wasn't working hard before, but he just started taking it to a different level because he realized he would be the man next year. And he, he had a great spring practice, and he's been doing real well for us so far, and we expect big things out of him. Probably the guy with the biggest expectations this year is Pete McMahon uh, over there at the right tackle position. Talk about the right side of the line. Um, well, we got... Uh, couple guys working in there you know Ben Cronin's working in there um, we have Ben Gates working in there you know so we got you know a good mix of guys just kind of trying to find the right mix and you know hopefully it'll work out right you feel like you step in then as the de facto leader of this line with Robert taking off yeah I mean I'm the fifth year senior um, I'm probably the one with the most experience so you know I've kind of got to take that leadership role this year throughout this season all right you guys got a choice who wants the running back? Who's going to who's gonna plow the biggest hole? The whole um, line will. Yeah, everybody. No We're competition? Two. Working together as a yeah. unit. All right, that's what I like to hear. Let's hear more from the former O-line coach and the voice. Thanks a lot, Andy. And uh, I guess if there are two personalities that mirror each other, kind of anyway, soft-spoken guys would be Pete McMahon and Mike Jones. And they are the two building blocks of your offensive line this year, the two guys with the most experience anyway. Well, they really are, and you know, Pete played uh, tremendously well for us last year. Uh, really would have been a three-year starter at Iowa, except we had so many good players in 2002 at that position, but uh, in a normal year he would have started that season. So he's done a great job. He's been a very uh, uh, quiet leader for us, but a strong leader. Pete practices hard every day. He has ever since he got here, and uh, it's really shown in his play. He's improved. He he's a tremendous football player. Mike Elgin, a uh, little different personality. Again, not real outspoken, but uh, very intense as well and very tough. And he, he's really done a good job, Gary. And Mike Jones, of course, with valuable experience since being thrown to the, to the Lions <laughs> at Ohio State last year. Uh, Lee Gray and uh, Ben Cronin, uh, they're, they're update their progress for us. Uh, both of them are coming along. I think Lee's had a good uh, spring and, and a good camp, and uh, Ben as well. Ben's playing both center and guard for us. and. Uh, he still remains in the competition. We're going to have to make a, a decision here probably uh, the next couple of days, obviously, before we start a game preparation in terms of what our starting lineup is going to be. But I'm uh, really happy uh, with the overall progress of the offense line. They've done a good job. You mentioned Mike Jones. 
Mike played tremendously well for us last year. I think he started seven ball games for us, and uh, Rick very excited about where he's picked up. So I think you know we're going to see good things from him not only this year but in the years ahead. Coach, uh, I'm still a little bit uh, doubtful that, and I, and I know Brian Ferentz can heal fast, but mm -hmm. after seeing him this spring and summer. Uh, Losing all that weight, is there is there any chance he can realistically play this year? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's realistic, but he's given it a good shot. He uh, got the weight back on fairly quickly. The big thing right now I'm concerned about is just how about his leg strength and development. Uh, you know, he's basically inactive for six, seven months. So, but the good news is about uh, 10, 14 days ago, he actually started running on dry ground and was pushing a golf cart around and uh, trying to block Coach Doyle and what have you. So, uh, you know, he's, he's getting a good workout in right now and. Uh, we're, we're not going to put a put you know put a limit on him. We're just going to take it week by week and see how things go. Obviously, we're not going to take any chances, but uh, who knows? We may see him out there this year. Well, if attitude has anything to do with it, Brian Ferentz will be on the field this year. He, he's the best at that. We'll come back and focus on the defense and special teams when preseason Iowa football with Kirk Ferentz returns. Celebrate the 75th anniversary of Kinnick Stadium by purchasing a patch at your local hy vee store. Welcome back to the Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz preseason special. When you talk about this Hawkeye team, most people's thoughts turn to the defense. And the real heart and soul of that defense is going to be the linebacking core this year. Karen Schulte has more on two of the best in the nation and who's in the running to fill the third. Linebacker. The Hawkeyes may very well have the two best returning linebackers in the country. Juniors Abdul Hodge and Chad Greenway are back for their junior campaigns, both coming off all Big Ten performances as sophomores. Together, they tallied an astounding 273 tackles last year and helped Iowa lead the league in scoring defense. I think we have a very good D-line, uh, obviously, so that makes us better because if we can hide behind that D-line, maybe you know it, uh, it opens us up for a lot of you know a lot of easy plays where essentially if we had to. You know, a D-line that couldn't help us out that much, we'd be kind of stuck in the muck back there. So, I mean, going this season, we're obviously excited. Um, we're pumped to have a D our whole D-line back. I mean, really, because Luki played a lot, Derek Robinson played a lot, and those are the two that are kind of inexperienced. But uh, we're feeling good on defense. Uh, have a lot, uh, have some inexperienced guys, but we're ready to go. Defense won championships, and uh, we step up to the challenge. It's real good playing next to Chad. He's a, he brings a lot of energy to the ball game. He got a lot of speed, and I learned a lot from him. Senior George Lewis learned his share playing back up to now graduated Grant Steen at the outside linebacker position. But this year, it's his turn to shine. You know, the game is played in three aspects, special teams, offense, and defense. So you really can't look at one side. Any side can contribute to a win in the ball game. For Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz, I'm Karen Schulte. All right, Karen, thanks a lot. We're joined now by a guy who uh, I guess we could call the quarterback of the defense, Sean Considine, is a man that Coach Ferentz called maybe the best free safety in the Big Ten, if not the country. So uh, lofty expectations going into this year for you. Well, I mean, it's, it's always good to have confidence from the coach and me as personally, but, you know, the fact is I still have to go out there and have a big year. Uh, I, I've set some goals personally and would like to, you know, improve upon my play of last year, but I think the main thing I'm looking to do this year is be more of a leader on the field, you know, being the free safety, you're kind of the back end, you're the last line of defense, and I need to make sure that we're getting lined up, uh, the younger guys are in there studying film before the games, and hopefully that'll put us in position to win a few ball games. From that back line, size this defense up. I mean, you get to see these guys make plays every day, and most folks haven't seen them outside of an open scrimmage make any play since last fall. Yeah, I mean, I think our defense has a lot of potential, but potential is just that. It's potential. You still got to go out there and do it. I mean, having a guy like Matt Roth, uh, I think it brings a lot to our defense just based on his intensity and toughness. We can the other players kind of feed on it. And we also have, you know, another guy on the D-line, Jonathan Babineau, who's been, this would be his fourth year starting at some position on our team. And he's another guy that a lot of players look to for leadership. And, you know, hopefully we can uh, take their qualities and, you know, it could help us out in the back end and as, as a secondary, you know, we'll do our job and make sure that we're keeping people in front of us and not giving up a big play. Probably the biggest question about the secondary is the loss of 33. Uh, how much different is life back there without Bob Sanders? Well, you know, Marcus Pascal, he, he stepped in and he, he really impressed everybody this spring. I mean, he's a, he's a good football player. He wasn't highly recruited and stuff, but he's just another one of those guys that came in here, you know, he's worked hard these last few years. He's proven that, you know, he can play strong safety for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Uh, we're not really looking to replace Bob Sanders, but we are looking to replace the strong safety, and uh, Marcus will do a good job of doing that. All right, let's take a little closer look at the DBs and the front four. <laughs> Iowa's strength lies in its defense. Seven starters return and the four newcomers have all seen significant playing time. This front four feels a little different. The crew of seniors are each unique in their own light. Together, they're fierce. Matt Roth was named a Playboy All-American. His battery mates have a different name for him. That's crazy. Roth is crazy. And that's, there's no other word for that. He's just crazy. In a good way. Something in a good way. Doing. Okay. He, he lets it loose on the field, and you know, I mean, he's got that sort of name for himself, and I mean, it's good. It's good. Jonathan Babineau has fought his battles with the injury bug. Let's say he's the strong, silent type. He's hard to read sometimes, so I mean, the person on the outside might not really know. But John, John is a funny guy. He, he's got a sense of humor. He, he, he could be quiet, but at the same time, he's silly. Iowa City native Tyler Lubke exploded into the rotation a year ago. He'd probably be the class clown. Big Rod. It's like <laughs> goofy. He's goofy. He's a goof troop. Looney Tunes. I say I'm kind of funny. I try to be funny. I try to keep it on the light side. And then there's Derek Robinson. If this were happy days, he'd definitely be the Fonz. I'll stick with uh, cool, you know, because he's, he's pretty cool. The way he, his mannerism, it's just... I guess I could be the low-key one, the, the cool one. You know, I gotta, somebody gotta be. Behind that foursome, expect to see plenty of Brian Madison, Alex Wilcox, George Eshateri, and Kenny Iwabima, all redshirt freshmen. The secondary lost hitman Bob Sanders, but returns everyone else. Marcus Pascal will likely take over the strong safety role. He'll be flanked by Sean Considine, a senior Coach Ferentz has called possibly the best in the Big Ten. Iowa's corners may be the best in the Big Ten as well. Juniors Antoine Allen and Javon Johnson will start on either side. That duo will be ably backed by Chickasay Ijiazi, and Walner Bellius headlines a huge batch of newcomers. All right, joined by two of Iowa's front four on the far side, Playboy All-American Matt Roth, right next to me, Jonathan Babineau, and John, we'll begin with you. Uh, a career where you've really struggled with the injury bug. It's been hard for you uh, to stay healthy out there, and I guess the first question is, how do you feel and how ready are you for this senior season? Uh, I'm, I'm most definitely ready. You know, I, I've been waiting on this opportunity for a long time since the injury happened, and I'm just really healthy right now, and I'm just ready to get out there and getting playing with my teammates again. I asked Matt uh, earlier this year about to describe everybody and the first word that came to mind with you was fast. He said you're uh, you're one of the speediest guys on the defense. Uh, I think he's faster than me but um, you know I try he to. He did say that by the way. But he was <laughs> I, I try to add a little quickness to the D-line help Matt out but um, I think you know it's, it's, a, it's a good um, positive for the defense you know to have guys reacting to faster guys than slow guys, and I, and I think that's going to be an advantage for us this year. All right, Matt, uh, the Playboy All-America honor, you're getting a lot of accolades going into this season. Is there more pressure because of that? No, I, I mean, it's a great honor. It's a preseason honor, and um, I mean, it's, it's, it's great, but, you know, I, I think I put the most pressure on myself than anyone, so, you know, nothing outside is going to be a factor. You guys... Uh, notice any difference without Jared and Howard there? Is it just easy to step right in uh, with the foursome you've got? Uh, they, they're, they're great players, but uh, I don't think we've missed a beat. I mean, we got some guys filling in that are you know, just as good, maybe even better. Could I get you guys to run when we leave here? <laughs> Set up a 40 or something and go for it? I don't know. We got practice today. <laughs> Probably coach wouldn't enjoy that, but let's see what he thinks. I know they both run about 4 seven forty, so that'd be a pretty good sprint. I think it might be a toss-up. I wouldn't want to predict. I wouldn't want to be the guy standing at the end with a stopwatch no, and getting no. in the way. I can guarantee you that. Speaking of Roth, uh, Abdul Hodge, Chad Greenway, you've got three potential All-America type candidates there. 
they're, they're going to be marked men, double teams, uh, Roth maybe triple teamed at times. Do you try and create, uh, without speaking for Norm Parker, do you try and create different matchups this season, new looks on defense for those three? I don't know how uh, radical the, the looks will be, but we will have a couple of wrinkles, no question about that. And you get three guys like that, and Jonathan Bob and I'd throw him right in there if uh, Jonathan's healthy. He's a dangerous player, too. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get some uh, matchups. Maybe we can take advantage of some personnel, that type of thing, during the course of the season. Regardless of what you do with that front seven, it's nice to have, uh, they like to call him the general, Sean Considine, in the back end to cover up any mistakes. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Sean played wonderfully well last year. Derek Pagel, uh, uh, who Sean inherited the job from, uh, was a great player back there, and I think Sean might even be another notch up. He's just a tremendous player at free safety for us and keeps everything steady up the middle, and uh, you know, it's nice to have some corners that have played also. Indeed. Back with more here on Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz, our preseason special after a brief timeout. Don't forget to check out Perky on Parade during your next visit to Iowa City. Iowa's favorite mascot will delight young and old fans of the Hawkeyes. Welcome back. When you talk about the departed Iowa seniors, the biggest hole to fill is probably on special teams. Nate Kading was all everything for the University of Iowa for four years. Now there's a young man from Ankeny trying to take his place. For two years, Kyle Schlicker waited in the wings while teammate Nate Kading earned awards as college football's top kicker. Now, Kading's gone and Schlicker gets his chance, an opportunity that he says he's more than ready for. I want to be as successful and, and you know, help the team out as much as possible. You know, you know, just, and just come through every time the team needs me. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I'm anxious for. Uh, you know, not, I'm not so concerned about breaking the records, you know, stuff like that. I'm just going to do my best, you know, and that's really all I can offer. He might not be too concerned with breaking records, but Kyle Schlicker has the ability to break records. The Ankeny native was the top high school kicker in the state of Iowa during his junior and senior years, and he shattered a Shrine Bowl record with this 60-yard field goal two years ago. Since then, Schlicker has watched from the sidelines as Nate Kading became the top kicker in all of college football. It was hard my first year because I was struggling kicking-wise. Um, you know, just a new environment, new team, new everything. But uh, it's gotten a lot better. And also, I get to kind of get the feel for things, how things work on the sidelines. And I've had two years to do that. That's a lot of time to get prepared for, you know, when it's my time. Kyle has been under the tutelage of Nate for the past two years. He's seen. He's seen what has to be done. He's seen how Nate goes about his business and, you know, Kyle's really, you know, kind of adapted to the way that Nate does things and it's almost like a mirror image of him now. Along with his punting duties, David Bradley is the holder on field goal attempts and extra points. This is Bradley's senior season and he believes the Hawkeye special teams will continue to excel. We've always had a strong special teams core in every area and, uh, I mean, for me personally, just, I'm, I'm excited to get the season started and get going. Iowa traditionally has outstanding punters like Reggie Roby and Jason Baker. David Bradley has steadily improved throughout his career and hopes he can also make his mark in Hawkeye lore. I'm Kevin Hall for Iowa Football with Kirk Ferentz. Joined now by Iowa Special Teams Coordinator and Wide Receivers Coach Lester Erb. And uh, first thing, let's talk about experience. You've got a punter out there that uh, has plenty of it this year. You know, it's good that we've had, you know, David Bradley around for four years. And uh, obviously, um, you know, we expect our, our most experienced players to play at their best. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to David having a good year. The other thing he really brings to our group, because as a specialist, we're kind of young. Uh, he brings that experience and that leadership that we really need. The big question has got to be who's going to replace 95. Uh, just a tremendous athlete and, and player for you guys for four years. Now you got a fresh face. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've been pretty fortunate over the past four years to have arguably the best kicker in the country in Nate Kading. And, uh, you know, we got a young guy, Kyle Slicker, right now who, who's really doing a good job. And uh, I really think that, you know, Kyle may not replace Nate, uh, but, but he's going to be a pretty good kicker for us. You know, he's had, really had two years to train under Nate Kading uh, to really devel develop that mental approach and, and the work ethic that Nate had. You know, a lot of teams, special teams is kind of an afterthought. It seems like with the Hawkeyes year in and year out, it's really a focal point of this team. I think it really starts with the head coach. Uh, coach Ferentz really puts a lot of importance into special teams. And uh, the one of the things I really tell everyone is that um, Coach Ferentz, you know, sits in every single one of our special teams meetings. So it sends a message to our kids right away about the importance of special teams. And secondly, it's, it's the attitude and the effort our kids bring in the meeting rooms every day and on the practice field and obviously on Saturdays. All right, guys, we'll send it over to you. 
Lester Erb, just one of your many bright assistant coaches, uh, young coaches on the staff. Kirk, I know you're pleased with not only special teams, but, but all areas of the club. Our staff's done a great job. I feel very, very fortunate. I work with a bunch of guys that are great people, great teachers, and uh, the job they do communicating to our team is just fantastic. Special teams have been so critical to your success of 21-5 and five the last two years, hasn't it? It really is, and that's a team effort, too. Lester uh, coordinates our special teams, and then Daryl Wilson obviously assists him, and the two of those guys really work well together. They've done a great job, I think, of giving our, our players a good game plan, but most important, our players uh, really believed in our special teams effort, and, and the, the play they've uh, given us on the field has been tremendous. Kyle Schlicker, uh, don't worry about his leg. He's got great leg strength, and I think a critical factor is that he's got a veteran like David Bradley, not only one of the Big Ten's best punters, but David Bradley is also holding the ball every snap this year for Kyle Schlicker. Stay with us. We're coming back with more preseason football with Iowa head coach Kirk Ferentz after a timeout. Avoid game day traffic hassles by taking the train to the game. Visit HawkeyeSports.com for more information about the Hawkeye Express. And we're back. We've talked offense, we've talked defense, we've talked special teams, so we've covered the Hawkeyes. The question is, who are they going to play? As we take a look at the 2004 schedule, six home games and every one of them is going to be challenging in its own But I'm excited to see the Ohio State Buckeyes come to Kinnick Stadium for the first time since John Cooper was head coach at Ohio State. That's going to wrap it up from this side of the locker room. I want to thank Karen Schulte and Kevin Hall for their contributions. And thank you all for watching. We hope you're a little more educated and ready for the 2004 football season for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Gary and Coach, we'll send it over to you guys. Have a great one. As always, a tough schedule, Coach. And that Arizona State trip and Michigan trip back-to-back, -back, uh, that's a critical swing early on, isn't it? Yeah, it had been nice to have a day or two uh, a buffer in there, but uh, it's just the way it, it worked out. We'll be, we'll be fine on that thing. But it's uh, a challenging schedule, both non-conference-wise, and then you look at the Big Ten, that's always tough. So, uh, you know, that being said, I think our guys are up for the challenge, and uh, we're just going to take it a week at a time, cliche, and see what happens. Didn't have a chance to ask you earlier, but I, uh, the pressure of Marcus Pascal coming in to try and take a – a legend defensive player Bob Sanders plays. How's he handling that? He's doing fine. I think the key thing is Marcus just has to play strong safety. He doesn't have to be Bob Sanders, and we're a little more veteran back there than we have been in the past. So uh, Joe Vaughn, Antoine, and Sean will do a great job. All Marcus has to do is play his position. And he plays it pretty good. Uh, speaking of legends, a couple of weeks ago, Hayden Fry inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame over in South Bend. Uh, what a weekend it was. Uh, and so, so well deserved. And, uh, you know, what a great honor. I don't think there's a higher honor for a player or a coach than to go into the Hall of Fame. And uh, I think I, I speak on behalf of all former players, all coaches that have worked with Coach Fry, not only at Iowa, but the other schools too, SMU North Texas. Uh, we're all just tremendously pleased for him. It's great to see that kind of recognition uh, come his way. And it sounds like it was a very, very special weekend. I'm just uh, sorry I couldn't have been there. Well, as we wish you good luck on the season, Coach. We'll look forward to our visits every week. Let's leave you with some video highlights of the Hayden Fry Hall of Fame induction in South Bend in early August.
Hayden Fry, Southern Methodist, North Texas State, and Iowa. You know, the reason I'm here is because of the great assistant coaches, the great players, the great support I had at three different universities as a head coach. The loyalty, the determination, and effort of those people made old Coach Fry look pretty good.